Tick-tock, time to rock. I uh, have to agree with Forrest Tree here. Forrest Tree said, David Wood is always on time. It's Sam Shamoon who is late. Even his live YouTube Sam is always late. What's okay. up with that, Sam? Hey, it's because I get I bet you nine out of ten he's a white man like you. A white man. Dude, you can't be tossing around racial insults on, on our channel. Okay. I'm <laughs> he's a brother, so hey man. They take that serious. It's a joke. YouTube, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, why am I why am I clipping here? It says I'm too loud. Turn this yeah, down. I can put you down. You're blowing my ears. I'm ear drum. Check, 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 check. Yeah. Yo. I like. It. What's up? Oh. What it is? Check, 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 check. Why is that clipping? I can't. I, my mic is set up exactly the way it always is, and it says I'm too loud. I'm too loud. What if I sit back like this? Check, check, check. Guys, how's the audio? Well, I had to put you down a little bit because it was on my eardrum, so I don't know. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure you noticed, but uh, what is it, last week? Was it last week? I said we'd be having a Quran Confirms the Bible week. Quran Confirms yeah. the Bible week. And that we would invite 1.6 billion Muslims, every Muslim on the planet, to join us live. To join us live. Zakir Naik? Shabir Ali, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, yeah. Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Farid, any of these Muslims who want to join us live. Any of these Muslims who want to join us live, they were entirely welcome to join us live. And then, no one, <laughs> no one wants to join yeah. us live, Sam. We, we did, to, to be fair, we did have a couple. Um, we did have a couple. Uh, who wanted to join us live, but lo and behold, lo and behold, the guy who's supposed to join us live today, uh, his name is, uh, I, I guess he's a convert to Islam named Zach, but um, Zach said that he was willing to come on on Wednesday. All of a sudden today, no, Zach. ghost mode, man, ghost mode, total ghost mode. Zach went on the attack and he ain't coming back, you know, but... Uh, someone just mentioned this, Dave. Maybe you want to mention it too. Yasser Qadi is leaving social media. Mm. I just read in the comment section. Right? Yep. Yasser Qadi. Yeah, so leaving social media. Yasser Qadi is leaving social media. So, guys, think about think about this religion that we're dealing with here. Um, they spend years. They spend years propagating a total lie. Right. And this is why this is why you can't be very sympathetic towards Sheikh Yasser Qadi, is he's one of the people who spread the lie, they spread the myth of the Quran's perfect preservation, and now the evidence has 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 been mounting against them for so long that they can no longer ignore it, and so they have to modify their position. So now you've got Sheikh Yasser Qadi and. Um, Shabir Ali saying, yes, okay, okay, there's some differences. Yeah, there's some different Qurans out there. Yeah, but it's it's okay because, you know, here here here's our reasons for it. But it, it flies in the face of what they said, you know, what Sheikh Yasser Qadi said before, perfect perfect preservation. Well, Sheikh Yasser Qadi's position was perfect preservation from the time of Uthman. Not a single difference anywhere in any, any manuscript. Total nonsense. Total nonsense. And people know it. And so now they have to that now they have to modify their position. And <laughs> but because the, the Muslim community has been indoctrinated to believe in perfect preservation, now if you tell them, yes, there are different Qurans, yes, there are differences in the manuscripts, if you tell them this, they freak out on you and, and say you're you're you you must you must not really be a Muslim, all this stuff. You're destroying our faith. And the result is that. <laughs> Sheikh Yasser Qadi now has to has to flee the internet because he can't take it. What are your thoughts on this, Sam? Well, you know, brother, we were, we were talking about it before we went live. Have you noticed the pattern? And this is all glory to Jesus Christ. In fact, you know it's my habit to say <clears throat> and ask and beseech the Father to bless us. So, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, bless David and I by filling us with the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ, anoint us to speak truth without error, and purify our motives 
to destroy all lies against your son, the Lord Jesus, until every knee bows and every tongue confesses that your son, the Lord Jesus, is Yahovah, Yahweh in the flesh. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Take over and save us from error and sinning. In Jesus' name. Now, I was just saying this to David offline. <clears throat> if you go back to when we started doing online ministry, before YouTube, what did we have? We had the websites where we would respond via written means. That's why some of my posts, my articles are very long. That first batch of Muslims faded. They're gone. Another batch of Muslims took their place. They're gone. It's a pattern we see. And all glory to Jesus Christ. And I want to give Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Father's beloved Son, as He fills us with the Holy Spirit. In spite of our issues and our imperfections, the Holy Spirit seals us, sanctifies us, <clears throat> and transforms us to glorify Christ. We're still here by the power of the Holy Spirit. But all these Muslims, they come and go. Where is Osama Abdullah? Where is Sami Zatri? But Sam Zawadi makes, you know, maybe a post here and there on Facebook, but they're gone. And these guys mm -hmm. were the supposed movers and shakers of Islamic apologetics. And slowly but surely, slowly but surely, Muhammad Hijab will be, will fade. Ali Drama Dawa will fade. They will all fade slowly but surely, but those who trust in Jesus Christ, whose foundation is the spiritual rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, they will stand and endure till the end because Christ is risen and he's almighty and we praise him and we thank him for that grace. So, yeah, one by one, they'll be disappearing. Yasser Qadi is just one of many and there's many more to come in Jesus name. Shabir Ali will be next. Watch. Yeah. And, and Sam, you mentioned before we started <laughs> how, how weird it is that people like you and me are the ones that are still here, right? We were doing this 10 years ago. We're doing it 12 years ago. We, you know, we, we, we've been doing this, uh, we've been doing this for a while and we're still here, which is, which is strange because man, we got issues. Serious issues, <laughs> serious issues on a level that's unimaginable, man. Seriously. I know that about myself. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, here's, what's funny, right? I mean, uh, I, I am a, I am an actual, X mental patient and Sam should be an X mental patient, right? Yeah. I mean, Sam has Sam has some serious issues. Sam, do you have massive anger issues? Impatience, anger, and I throw tantrums like a little sissy. Yeah, I got it all, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, it, and so it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like the people with all the mental health uh, history should be the ones who last long term, but we're the ones who last. And, and yeah, all these, uh, the, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have a new group of Muslim apologists who come in and yeah, try and find them five, five, six, seven years later. They just, they, they fade out. And so interesting stuff, interesting stuff. All right. Well, uh, yeah, let me, uh, and by the way, Dave, let me explain to people one reason why I block. So this is because of my issues guys, for the record, you're hearing it. It's not the first time I've said it on my own sessions, but mm -hmm. here you'll hear why I block. I block for my own safety so I don't stumble and sin and lose my anger and shame Jesus Christ because that's an area in my life I'm confessing, so pray for me. God, give me victory. When someone keeps egging me on, my anger kicks in and I can't control it. So what did I do to protect myself from shaming the Lord? Block for my safety, not for that person. So pray I have victory in that area, but until I do, I'd rather block you than lose my testimony. What do you think, Dave? Mm. No, that, that that totally makes sense. So, guys, keep in mind what Sam is saying because a lot of you, <laughs> um, a lot of you come and c complain to me when Sam blocks you, David. How can Sam block me? Huh? And uh, so, what what Sam is saying there is, hey, he's not saying that uh, you are unworthy of discussion or you're so horrible that no one should discuss these issues with you he's saying he has some issues with his temper and he understands um that he has to he has to just say hey i can't i'm not the person to interact with you because i'm gonna i'm gonna get angry and i'm gonna flip out and yeah. um so sucks being me but go ahead it it certainly would i would yeah. i would have some, have some problems <laughs> you do that, let me get my drink i'm listening so let me All get right. my drink yo so uh so anyway ladies and gentlemen yeah we were trying to um we, we had someone scheduled for today and then uh, just didn't show up. Shocker, shocker. But think about this. I mean, this is one of our favorite arguments, if not our favorite argument. Call it the Islamic dilemma. I'll have Sam give a quick rundown. 
Um, so if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to just shatter a big part of our apologetics, this would be a good place to do it. And yet, when we offer the opportunity, here's what you have, Sam. You have Muslims who show they show up in the comment section afterwards, and they'll you know thump their chest. Oh, ho, ho, we refute you here, we refute you there. And you have guys who are happy to do it in videos, right? Why do they do it in videos? Well, they know that most of their viewers are not going to come and watch watch our live stream if we respond to them, right? And so they're trying to calm their people down and say, oh yes, we can answer this, we can answer this. But as soon as we say, guys. Why don't it, why don't one of you or a couple of you, a few of you, get together, come on over here, and we'll have a discussion. We'll we'll slow things down. You you take your best your best responses and we'll 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 just have a calm discussion about them. We'll go through them nice and carefully so that all viewers will know that we've really gone through the evidence, not just you know put band-aids here and there. And then all of a sudden, no, oh, you're not worthy of this. Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> you guys do. There are there are Muslim apologetics channels out there that do nothing but but post responses to us all day, right? And then as soon as you say, "Hey, well, come on over and join us," and you can re you can refute us live. Oh no, no, you're not you're not worthy of us, really. If you guys don't like us that much, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to take this opportunity to totally embarrass us? I I, I can't figure it out, Sam. But um, uh, I did want to I did want to respond real quick before we get started because guys, we'll we'll uh, th this is why we're a few minutes late. It wasn't actually uh, it wasn't Sam. It was since uh, our Muslim guest Zach Zach. You know who you are. You're probably watching right now. Since our Muslim friend Zach uh, was a no show, I went ahead and took screenshots of uh, I took screenshots of some of the uh, Muslim responses to us on this issue. So I went ahead and took some recent uh, pics so that we can know what the responses are. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and go through those. Also, any Muslims in the chat uh, who have responses for us, you're welcome to bring those forward. Um, totally happy, totally happy if you want to go verse by verse um, through these through this issue. But we have, uh, we have some screenshots pulled up so we can see the arguments. Um, but uh, Mustafa, I noticed Mustafa said that I didn't respond to you. Uh, Mustafa, you you said you were willing to be on, uh, I believe, Saturday during the day. Um, and so let's do this. Yeah, uh, no, no problem. Uh, but I'm I'm a little concerned, Mustafa, about your internet upload speed. It was like uh, your upload speed was like one point something or two point something uh, megabits per second. That's on the slow end, so. Um, are you are you going to be just audio or are you going to be video? Because it, I prefer people being on by video, but that you, you'll have a little problem with that uh, with video there. Yeah. So maybe you can find a place, go over someone's house who has a stronger internet connection, or if you're going to be if you're just planning on being audio, because some people just want it. We we had several people who were guests in the past who just wanted to be audio. So if you just want to be audio, that would be fine. So anyway, but, it was. By the way, David. Hmm. Let them know, even though you had announced it on Monday, number one, congratulations on your anniversary. The Lord Jesus bless your wife and your boys and bless you abundantly and provide for you. But, but not only was it your anniversary, but we had no takers until Wednesday as well, right? Um, yeah. When it comes to, because we we're going to do a whole week, but what's the point of doing a whole week when there's no takers? So the reason why we're here Wednesday, so they understand Zach was supposed to show up on Wednesday. He's a no-show. So that's why we couldn't go through doing an entire week because Muslims failed to take us up on the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I want them to know that. And again, I mean, isn't, isn't this amazing? You have an awesome opportunity to completely refute and embarrass and humiliate us. Right. And you just don't want to. And, and Sam, just to be clear, just to be clear, because I can imagine a Muslim saying, hey, I don't want to go on there. Uh, and it's going to be David Wood and Sam Shimon. Sam, just to be clear, if we got contacted tomorrow yeah. and it was Shabir Ali, and Shabir Ali said, yes, I want to come live, but I'm bringing uh, Dr. Zakir Naik and, uh, and Adnan Rashid and Sheikh Yasser Qadi and uh, Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab and Fareed, yeah. And we all we all want to we all want to be on at the same time. We are we are we cool with that? I pray, and I'm not saying this. 
I pray, by the grace of Jesus, that what you said comes to pass. I pray all of them join live. I will be there in a twinkling of an eye, by the grace of Jesus Christ. I pray that happens. Please, please, Lord, hear what David Wood said. Make it happen. You don't have to pull my arm, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'll be there in the twinkling of an eye. I, I have to say, Sam, I can I can only conclude. I can only conclude. I can only conclude that the reason these guys don't want to come on is that they they know and they know that they've got a problem here. They know that the Quran does nothing but affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, and that the Quran contradicts the Jewish and Christian scriptures which puts them in an inescapable dilemma that namely if we have the word of god islam is false because islam contradicts what we have and if we don't have the word of god islam is false because islam confirms what we have so either way islam is false they know this so they know that they have to keep deceiving the muslim population because they don't want to turn out like sheikh yasser qadi admit the truth admit that there's a problem and then they get they get banished from islamic apologetics and islamic yeah. scholarship so I, I can only assume because why why on earth would they not want to just come over here and join us why would they not want to come um well because you're beneath it you, you're beneath us what you guys you guys again spend all your time trying to refute us posting videos about us posting comments about us so you obviously think it's important to refute us if you're not willing to just come on live and have a discussion. I, I have to be awfully suspicious here. All right, Sam, before we get started, and, yes. and Muslims, you Muslims who are watching, and I know I know you're watching, you Muslims yes. who are watching, uh, now's the time, because I'll start paying attention um, to the comments here. Now's the time where if you have some verses that you think show that according to the Quran, the Bible's been corrupted, then now's the time to bring those up and we'll, we'll we're happy to go through them uh slowly carefully one at a time no problem happy to go through those and um i also have comments pulled up so we can go through comments but uh sam for yes. anyone who's new here why don't you go ahead and break down the problem that we're talking about yeah you already alluded to it and by the grace of jesus christ may the lord jesus anoint this session for his glory the islamic dilemma <clears throat> i call i used to call it islamic dilemma 101 because Islam has many dilemmas, but the most basic, and this is the one that I agree with David, is the most foundational. And guys, you Christians, you've heard it over the years, perfected. Perfected by the grace of Jesus Christ, because glory to Jesus. Once you know the argument, the Muslims cannot escape this dilemma. And what's the dilemma? If you let the Quran speak, just like Shibra Ali <clears throat> says, because he has a show called uh, Let the Quran Speaks, irony of ironies he does anything but let the Quran speaks but if you let the Quran speak in its context the Quran confirms and we're going to prove it today and we want you to hit us with your best shot the Quran confirms the very scriptures that the Jews and Christians at the time of Muhammad were reading and cherished and had in their possession this is a fact an arguable fact the Quran also says that Jesus confirmed the scriptures that he had access to that were in the possession of the Jews of his day. So when you look at history, folks, and you look at the manuscript tradition, we have a rich manuscript tradition of the, the biblical books in various languages, in Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, Greek, Latin, <clears throat> over 25,000 copies in all the various languages from before, during, after the time of Christ, before, during, after the time of Muhammad, and all of these manuscripts are virtually identical in that I don't care what copy of John you pick up. If you pick up a Gospel of John in the 3rd century and you compare it to the Gospel of John in the 9th century, it's going to give you the same theology, the same Jesus, the same message, the same salvation. Therefore, if the Quran is true, that the scriptures at the time of Jesus and Muhammad were the very uncorrupt, pure, preserved words of God, then that means the Bible that David reads, the Bible that I read, no matter what English version, because they're virtually translating the same manuscripts. That's why any version will give you the same message. There are variant readings here and there, but they're minor. And if you're going to talk about variant readings, we'll have a field day with the different Arabic Qurans. <clears throat> The Bible we have today is what the Jews and Christians would have had at Muhammad's time 
and is identical to the Old Testament that the Jews had at Jesus' time. Therefore, my Bible, according to the Quran, is the uncorrupt, pure words of God that I need to judge Muhammad by. But there's the problem. The Quran contradicts these books. It contradicts what these books have to say about God, about Jesus, about the Spirit, about salvation. Therefore, Muhammad is condemned as a false prophet, antichrist, Islamic dilemma. Now, if you say the Bible's corrupt, then the Quran is condemned because the Quran says the Bible's incorruptible, so you, you're stuck. You want to say the Bible's not corrupt? Muhammad is a false prophet. You want to say the Bible's corrupt? The Quran is wrong. Muhammad is wrong because the Quran and Muhammad say the Bible's never been corrupted. Muslims, you choose your poison. There you go. So, um, gosh, why is this? I'm really having a problem with audio and that uh, the th it's all over the place today for some reason. Um, not you, Sam, just me. Uh, I just got to trash this mic. I got this mic because it was supposedly, supposedly good, an huh? awesome, popular mic. And, uh, yeah, I want something I can control from the thing. Anyway, uh, people are saying I'm louder. Sam, let's go ahead and chat for a second. Um, I've yeah, made yeah. some adjustments here. They were saying that I'm much louder than you, so which is okay. weird because you're the loudest person in the world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, are we are we are we roughly even now? Sam, go ahead and talk. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's uh, there's nothing I can do about the audio. I no, have it at that's, max. Yeah, no, so no, that, that's 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 that's, that's 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 not you. That's that's my that's yeah. my settings. For some reason, I'm getting a low reading, then I'm getting a high reading on my own, and so on. And yeah. uh, so I'm I don't know if that's just a defective mic or something like that. Yeah. Um, so can you guys at least hear me enough to understood what no, no, the it, 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 yeah, it, 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 it's it's not you. It's basically saying I'm too loud. Yeah. But someone was telling me I'm not loud enough. That's why. I keep well, that's because they, they might they might have their their uh, their uh, audio adjusted for listening to me. And then you're since you're lower, then there's a problem. Hmm. Um, all right. Everyone's saying now you're OK, I guess. I don't know. OK, they're saying they're saying all good. Yeah. All right. Saying all good. All right. All right. Um, I just okay. <laughs> All right. So guys, again, I have some uh, I have some screenshots and so on pulled up of some objections. But Sam, we yes. went ahead and matter of fact, let me pull this up right now uh, because we got a comment here. Let's see, twenty six eighty five. And let me pull up twenty six eighty five here. Mm -hmm. We got a comment about Bukhari 2685. That one again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's what's funny. <laughs> Look. <laughs> so Truth Exposed here said, X17 Apologetics. Can you both read Bukhari <laughs> Hadith 2685 and tell me after reading it, you still think that Quran confirms the Bible? Now think about yeah. how Sam. Yeah, right there. Yeah. How silly is this, right? How how silly yeah. is this, right? Guys, can you give us look, we've got these verses. In the Quran, over and over again, that affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the present ongoing continuing authority of the Torah and the Gospel, we're called the people of the book. What book do we have? What, what's going on here? The Quran, over and over again, says that it's confirming that which we have with us, right? We know what yeah. we have, right? And so we say, so can you give us a verse that tells us that we shouldn't trust the scriptures that we have? Can you give us a verse? And the response is, ha ha. <laughs> if you go to Sahih al Bukhari 2685, <laughs> there you'll see, there we'll see what? There we'll see the hadith? Anyway. Uh, all right. Yeah, so you this caught is. It, right? Yeah. You, I got uh, it. I, guys, uh, I, see, when he read it, I caught it, but I want to see, I want everyone to catch it. We said, and I'll deal with the Hadith, we're not running from the Hadith. We mm -hmm. said, the Quran confirms, he quotes Hadith, says, you see, do you still think Quran confirms the Bible? Now, maybe I'm kind of, I am mentally challenged, we know this, we've already established it. But you understand the point, folks? We're talking about the Quran, he quotes a narration that he's misinterpreted and assumes that Ibn Abbas is teaching the corruption to the text, and yet somehow that narration is now equated with the Quran. Last time I checked, the Hadith is not the Quran. But hey, you know what? Silly me, this is Islamic logic, right? So, and I know what he's referring to. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, we do. If you want me to read it, uh, I can. Yeah, I've got, I've got it, or you can, either way. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, ha I have an article responding to it. So here is the particular narration. 
uh, that he's citing. Okay, there are several versions of it, and I'm going with the old classification. So, Sal Bukhari, Volume 3, Number 850. This is in my article, by the way. Not only am I aware of the Hadith, I responded to it by the grace of God on AnsweringIslam.net. So I'll send them the link later. Okay, now there are different versions of it. I'm going to read this particular version, but it's basically the same. Sa'il Bukhari, Volume 3, Number 850. Narrated Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Utbah. Say that five times fast. Ibn Abbas said, O Muslims, how do you ask the people of the scriptures? Though your book, i.e. the Quran, which was revealed to his prophet, is the most recent information from Allah, and you recite it. The book that has not been distorted. Allah has revealed to you that the people of the scriptures have changed with their own hands what was revealed to them. And they have said, as regards their changed scriptures, this is from Allah, in order to get some worldly benefit thereby. Ibn Abbas said, isn't it the knowledge revealed to you sufficient to prevent you from asking them? By Allah, I have never seen any one of them asking Muslims about what has been revealed to you. So that's the assumption, right? The assumption is here, let me read the part, right? They've distorted it. How did they distort it? Well, okay. <clears throat> and then it says, that the people's scriptures have changed with their own hands what was revealed to them and have said, this is from Allah. So he's assuming that this means that the people at the time of Ibn Abbas had changed the scriptures with their hands and claimed this is from Allah. Okay, let's assume he's right. For, for argument's sake, let's assume truth exposes right, and I wish you would call me to expose me. <clears throat> at best, this statement contradicts other narrations attributed to Ibn Abbas, and other statements attributed to Muhammad, as well as the Quran. So what you just did was, you pitted Ibn Abbas against Ibn Abbas, against Muhammad, against the Quran. You sure you want to go that route? What do I mean by that? What do I mean? That even if I interpret it the way he did, I'm assuming his interpretation is correct. They changed the scriptures and claim that their changes are from God. Let's assume he's right. Okay, now, this comes from Sal Bukhari. <clears throat> Under the, the subheading, the words of Al Almighty Allah, Allah Ma Almighty, it is indeed a glorious Quran preserved on a tablet. This comes from Sahih Collection of Al Bukhari, <clears throat> Book 100, the Book of Tawheed. You'll find this in the Book of Tawheed as a subheading. And I'm reading Aisha Buley's English translation. The Book of Tawheed, the belief that Allah is one in His essence, attributes and actions. Now, notice what Bukhari included under the subheading by the mount and an inscribed book Katada or Katada said that Mastur means written Yasturin means they inscribe and the Um Al-Kitab the whole of the Quran and its source he said that Ma Talfitzu Talfitzu means he does not say anything but that it is written against them Ibn Abbas, guys, pay attention. Bukhari is now citing Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said, both good and evil are recorded. And you harafunna, you harafunna, that's the word typically used for changing, means they remove. No one removes the words of one of the books of Allah Almighty, but they twist them, interpreting them improperly. How did Bukhari interpret remove, citing Ibn Abbas? He says, Ibn Abbas said, remove. Bukhari, who collected your hadith, truth revealed. Bukhari is the one who quoted Ibn Abbas, that hadith. Bukhari who quoted that hadith that you're misinterpreting. Here's what Bukhari said. No one removes the words of one of the books of Allah Almighty, but they twist them, interpreting them improperly. So who knows more, you, truth revealed, or Bukhari, who gave you that narration from Ibn Abbas? And in case you still don't like it, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, his exposition of chapter 3, verse 81. Ibn Kathir, and by the way, for the record, Ibn Kathir believed the Bible was corrupted. He believed the extent Arabic versions of the Bible, because they had variant readings, was proof of the corruption of the Bible. And yet, sadly, he's so inconsistent because despite the fact that he was aware, the Quran had different qira'at, qira different Arabic readings, and had thousands of Arabic variants, he still believed the Quran is perfectly cons uh, consistent and preserved, which means that Ibn Kathir, like you, grossly inconsistent and dishonest. But here's what Ibn Kathir says in his exposition, which you can read in English, because it's translated in English, of chapter 3 of the Quran, and I said 81, correct myself, 78. Chapter 3, verse 78. Chapter 3, verse 78, 
of Ibn Kathir's exposition, chapter 3, verse 78. Let me read. Mujahid, chapter 3, verse 78. Ashabi, Al Hassan, Katada, there goes Katada again. Al Rabbi bin Anas said that who distort the book with their tongues, this is an exposition of chapter 3, verse 78, means they alter Allah's words. Al Bukhari reported, Ibn Kathir is saying, Al Bukhari reported, that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means they alter and add, although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books, they alter and distort their apparent meanings. Let me repeat it again in case, in case falsehood revealed, didn't get it. Falsehood revealed, here, I want you to hear Ibn Kathir citing Bukhari, which I cited, okay? Although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books. Can't be done. You're saying that's a lie. It can be done. They alter and distort their apparent meanings. That's how they distort it. Wahab bin Munabbih, who was a Jew converted to Islam. Wahab bin Munabbih, who knew the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad, said the Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them. And no letter in them was revealed. One more time. Wahab bin Munabba said, The Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them. And no letter in them was removed. However, the people must guide others by addition and false interpretation, relying on books that they wrote themselves. Like the Talmud. That's what they're talking about. These extra biblical <clears throat> scriptures that the Jews came up with. Like the Talmud. Because at that time... The Jews followed the Talmud, and we agree with them. Those books are not scripture. Then they said, this is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. As for Allah's books, this is, again, Wahab bin Munabba. As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. In case falsehood exposed didn't get it. As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. So there you go, buddy. Even al-Bukhari, who quoted that narration of Ibn Abbas, didn't come to the conclusion that the previous scriptures were corrupt. He actually interpreted the way we are. They distorted it, not by corrupting the text of the books, but by misinterpreting them. Bye-bye, falsehood exposed. Surprise, David. So, Sam, this is something I find over and over again, but it, it will be the same thing here. Um, it, and it, it's true whether we go with the Quran or the Hadith. If we go to a Quran passage and we, the, the Muslim will take something that on a superficial level, without any examination whatsoever, sounds like it could be talking about the corruption of our text. Then they'll bring it up. Then we actually examine the text. We take a closer look. We compare it with other, uh, other sources. We compare it with what the Quran says and so on. And then we find out there's no way this is talking about the corruption of the text. And they'll just stomp, the, they'll just stomp their feet and say, well, it does anyway. Why? Because they need it to say that. They understand that the moment the Quran actually affirms our scriptures is the moment Islam has self-destructed. And so they have to believe that the Quran doesn't affirm the Bible. They have to believe that the Quran somehow, somehow condemns our scriptures without actually ever bothering to do it. Uh, and it's, wow. I mean, for a, for, for a God who constantly brags about being clear, he's got to be the worst communicator in all of history because all he ever says are things that praise our book. Yeah that affirm the inspiration and preservation and authority of our book and can never issue one clear statement that is at all critical of our book. And so Muslim apologists have to come in here and twist and distort the meaning of various passages of the Quran to try and make it sound like that. They have to do the same thing with the Hadith. And wow, it's, it's a, yeah. we, we might want to introduce it as a trilemma. <sighs> Uh, because the, the, the other possibility is Allah is just the worst communicator in all of history, right? So in other words, if Allah is really trying, if Allah is really trying to condemn our scripture, but, you know, he's got some speech impediment that makes him consistently say the exact opposite of what he means, then that, it sounds like that's what lots of Muslims are actually telling us. And by the way, check this out. <laughs> 
So th this is the this is this is the gen genuine response here. This comes from Abe Abe. He says, "I killed too many Christians. Inshallah, I will go and kill David." <laughs> and then he spent the other comments trying to dox me. <laughs> so look, that's what he's doing. So, yeah, but 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 think about this, right? We say, guys, your entire religion is self-destructing here. It's self-destructing. Your God affirms our book, but our book contradicts the Quran on fundamental doctrines, which means that your entire religion self-destructs. You're, you're, you've got a false book. There's no way your religion can be true. And if we're wrong, we invite 1.6 billion Muslims to join us live and refute us. Show us where we're wrong. And the response is, I'll kill you, David Wood. Yeah, wow. And then he's boasting that he killed many Christians. See, look, man. See, that's a lie. see, yeah. See, look, man. I, I, I wasn't planning on doing this, but that's that. That's going to cost you a page of the Quran there. It's going to yep. cost. That's going to. That's going to. That's going to cost you a page of the Quran there. Hey, wasn't planning on doing that, man. But just see, in that's there. what happens, man. See, you, see, you, you, bring, you bring this on yourself, man. You bring it on yourself. Yep. All right. <laughs> oh, that's what you get. You talk about killing Christians who are now glorified in the presence of Jesus. I hope you're lying. That's what we're going to do. We're going to destroy your religion. Bury Muhammad further in hell by the power of Jesus Christ. So keep talking. Um, I haven't scrolled down to this yet. It'll take me a minute to find it. But yeah. um, Sitgo Gaming says, "Oh, yeah, I think I think on. I think Sitgo Gaming is Mustafa." I hope he shows up, Sitgo. Stop talking here. Show because, up Saturday. We'll see how well you do. Yeah, I think Sitgo Gaming is Mustafa, and Mustafa, if really Mustafa. I hope, I mean, if you're planning on joining us live on Saturday, I hope you're saving your best stuff yep. and not giving your best stuff here now. Well, uh, I can tell you one of the arguments he better not bring up. He's going to regret it. Oh, it's referring to the fulfilled book, the book that's fulfilled. What in the world does that mean? He's going to regret it, but I, I hope he brings it up. <clears throat> so, fulfilled book, Sam. Fulfilled book. Okay. So uh, the comment here is... This verse debunks all of Sam's claim. 546. And I see why really? and, that and I, me? I I see why he would say that. Yeah, you, you you know you you know what the what the argument you know what the are oh, up here he goes. I had to scroll through to find it. it. Five, it you mean 548 because 546 No, 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 he, he means 546. Yeah, 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 but 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 you you know you know what the reasoning is, right? The it says that Allah gave Jesus the Injil, but we don't have we don't have an Injil that was written by Jesus and therefore really? um, I'm I'm assuming that's the reasoning and and uh, yeah. Mustafa you can you can uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, matter of fact, let me uh this will take me a couple seconds to get this pulled up here. But we'll yeah, go I, ahead. And, I have it. Yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up. Um, matter of fact, let me start at 43, just in case we want to refer back to it, and I'll go all the way to 49, just in case we want that. Um, so let me scroll down here to 46, and uh, let He's me. Got to come up with better arguments than these, I hope. But anyway, that's fine. Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, uh, I'll, I'll read the verse and I'll give what I assume his argument is. And then if I'm wrong, uh, Mustafa can correct me. So we have here, um, what translation should we go with? We got Shakir right there. So yeah, M.H. Yeah. Shakir. And we sent after them in their footsteps, Isa, son of Miriam. So Isa is the Arabic word for Esau. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent, not many. not Jesus. So, wow. Uh, and we sent after them in their footsteps, Isa, son of Miriam, verifying what was before him of the Torah, and we gave him the Injil in which was guidance and light, and verifying what was before it of Torah, Torah, and a guidance and an admonition for those who guard against evil. So, Mustafa, Mustafa, I'm assuming your argument is. What I just said, that this says that the Injil is a book given to Jesus, and since it's a book given to Jesus, but Christians don't believe they have a book that was uh, given by Jesus, therefore the Quran is not affirming the four Gospels that we have. It's affirming some other book that we don't have, and therefore we have all kinds of problems. Uh, go ahead and, go ahead and uh, let me know if that is the correct understanding of your point, Mustafa. Um, and uh, 
if he if he wants to correct me, he can. But uh, Sam, what would what would your yeah. response be to that argument? And I have uh, I have any passages you want to bring up? Yeah, from... I mean, be, just the context itself, and you know the context better than me. You use it now. He stopped at five forty six. If that is his argument, he says that the Bible is written forty years after by his disciples. So he just made a comment. The Bible is written forty years after his disciples. At least he admits it was written by his disciples, right? Okay. So, so he does yeah, comments. So let me I guess you're up. right. I guess that's what he meant. Okay. So I think that's what he means. So because he responded that way. The Bible was written 40 years after after Jesus by his disciples. So number one, thank you for admitting his disciples wrote it. So glory to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. We got a Muslim to finally admit the New Testament writings were written by the Huariyun, the disciples of Jesus. So you got that one up? Thank I want you. them to see it because okay. I got that we're coming gonna up. Now, okay, we're going to run with this. Guys, I want you to thank our friend here. He just admitted, guys, and we're going to answer him thoroughly. He just admitted, glory to Jesus Christ. The Bible is written 40 years after by his disciples. So you guys see, he admit, Jesus' disciples wrote the Bible. al Hawariyun. that's the Arabic term for the disciples of Jesus. You know why this is gold? Because according to his Quran, chapter 3, you can read 55, and chapter 61, verse 14, we've done this, this is Islamic dilemma 202, if you want to call it that. It's still part of 101. Those two passages say, Allah swore that Jesus' disciples would be victorious, empowered by Allah, to defeat the unbelievers, they would be uppermost, they would have the upper hand, and Allah gave them victory, and their victory would remain till the day of resurrection. He just admit that the victorious disciples of Jesus wrote the Bible. Which disciples? Chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 55, 55 chapter 61, verse 14. The disciples whom Allah empowered to vanquish the unbelievers, to become uppermost against the disbelievers, and he swore to Jesus they would be dominant, uppermost, till the day of resurrection. They have the victory. So that means, folks, you can thank this man. You can trust your Bible because it's written by Jesus' victorious disciples, empowered by Allah, strengthened by Allah to preserve the message of Jesus, to make sure that Jesus' message would spread and triumph over against the unbelievers who sought to oppose it, Thank you, my friend. You just confirmed the New Testament has the backing of Allah. Allah ensured that the disciples wrote it, and Allah ensured that it would be disseminated all over the world. And that means that is the message that Jesus gave to his disciples. We can trust that message. Praise be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought he's trying to refute me, David. What's going on here? Yeah, he definitely helped you at that point. Um, but but uh, assuming that his view is something like this, <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure out how to put together a coherent position based on the teachings of Islam. But here you go, Sam. I did it. I got it. Ready? Yeah. Jesus, according to the Quran, Jesus brought the gospel. Yes. Right? And Mustafa here has agreed that Jesus' disciples wrote the New Testament gospels, yep. wrote the New Testament gospels 40 years after the time of Jesus. Well, what happened? Well, remember, Sam, according to mainstream Islam, Allah tricked and deceived Jesus' disciples into believing that he died on the cross. So here's what happened. Yep. Jesus brought the true Injil, the gospel, revealed it to his followers who were devout Muslims. But then Allah entered the picture, tricked and deceived people into believing that Jesus died by crucifixion. Then, because Allah had done such a great job tricking everyone, they founded their new faith based on the claim that Jesus died on the cross uh, for a purpose, and they went through the, that th this caused them to revisit the Old Testament, which prophesies that someone's going to die on the cross for sins and then rise from the dead. Uh, this, is, this is the Messiah here. And so this caused them to this caused them to go back to the Old Testament scriptures and think about the implications of the Messiah dying on the cross, which, according to Islam, Allah simply deceived them into believing. And so these guys basically became what we know uh, as Christians, and then they wrote it. And so they, they wrote down their corrupted version. They've been deceived by Allah, 
And based on Allah having deceived and, uh, and misled them, then they wrote down the four Gospels. But the point here that Mustafa is trying to make is the four Gospels that we have are not the Injil that was revealed to Jesus. We don't have that Injil. So what's yeah. your response? Yeah. And by the way, just understand what Sitko just did, Mustafa. That means Allah empowered the disciples to write a book containing the revelation that Jesus died for our sins and rose victorious and sits enthroned as King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, all of which was a lie and deception on part of Allah. But Allah wanted them to believe that and record that and then empower them to disseminate it all over the world. Thank you, Allah, for deceiving the disciples and making them victorious in their deceit. Allahu Akbar! I just want them to understand that point. Now, he just said, where is the gospel of Jesus, Sam? Uh, well, according to Muhammad, it was right there in his lifetime. Can you read chapter 5, verse 47 for me, David, if you want to put it up for them? So uh, here's the answer. I want Mustafa to hear. 547. Guys, he just asked, where is the Injil of Isa, the gospel of Jesus? Well, if you believe your, your prophet Muhammad, it was there at the time of Muhammad. It was there. So are you saying Muhammad is a liar? Well, I agree he's a liar and a false prophet, but for other reasons. So if you want to put up 547, you can read it any version. Read whatever version you want. Yeah, M Mustafa, I have to I have to point out here that this is a very common question from Muslims. Well, where's the gospel of Jesus? And you don't realize this is a problem for you, not for us. Yeah. We've never the the gospel of Jesus that is referred to in in scripture. If you're talking about something that Jesus brought, that's the gospel that he's preaching. The word gospel just means good news, right? That's the good news that he's preaching, right? It doesn't refer to a text that he's bringing. But Muslims want to say that it refers to a text. It refers to a text that Jesus brought with him. Jesus is walking around with a book, right? And here's the problem. And so since you believe that, that commits you to the belief that Jesus brought a book. But it doesn't just commit you to that, Mustafa. And so uh, the, please try and get your mind around this point. Because if you get your mind around this, you're on your way out of Islam. Yep. According to the Quran, it's not just that Jesus came with some book, the gospel, if that's how you're interpreting these texts. That gospel was preserved from the first century to the second century, then to the third century, then to the fourth century, then to the fifth century, then to the sixth century, then to the seventh century. Right? How do we know this? Because look at what your God says right here in Surah 5, verse 47. Just one verse after the verse you wanted us to go to. What does Allah yep. say? Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. Keep in mind, this is just a few verses after Surah 5 verse 43, where some Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute, and Allah's response is, what are they coming to you for, Muhammad? They've got the Torah. Right, And they are commanded to judge by the Torah. A few verses later, we have 547, where Christians are commanded to judge by the gospel. Obviously, this is talking about Christians from the t during the time of Muhammad and afterwards, that we are required to judge by the gospel. And so here's, what, here's the amazing irony, Mustafa. Muslims will sit there mocking, ha ha, where's the gospel of Jesus? Your God says we have it. Your God exactly. says it's the book that we have with us. So you're laughing and saying, ha ha, you don't have the gospel of Jesus. Your God says we do. Your God says yeah, we do. Your, right prophets, there, your prophet says we do. Your God and your prophet say they're affirming the book that we have and commanding us to judge by the book that we have. And you're laughing and saying, ha ha, but where is it? You don't have it. Ha ha ha. Great. You're, <laughs> you're mocking your own God and your own prophet. So please yeah. break down for us. Mustafa, where is the gospel? Where is the gospel that Allah is commanding us? There, there's, a, there's a kind of... There's a kind of fundamental principle in moral philosophy, and that's that ought implies can. If I say you ought to do something, I'm implying that you have some sort of ability to do it. Well, if Allah is saying you guys have to judge by the gospel, Allah is saying that we have the gospel. Allah wouldn't. Allah can't say judge by a book that you don't have and you have no access to. That wouldn't make any sense at all, Mustafa. So if Allah is saying you guys judge by the gospel, What's assumed in there is that we have the gospel. You're saying we don't have it, and you're laughing at us. Ha ha, you don't have it. Okay, your God says we have it. Your God says we have it. So we're we're not the ones who need to tell you where's some book revealed to Jesus. If you're saying a book was revealed to Jesus that was preserved 
from the first century all the way down to the seventh century and that Allah continues to command us to judge by, you need to tell us what book is your God commanding us to judge by? 100%. What book is your God commanding us to judge by? Because if he says, hey, I'm telling you to judge by the book that you have, well, great, that's the Bible. You're saying, no, it's not the Bible, it's something else. Okay, well, what is it then? Your God's commanding us to judge by it. So we're, we're actually interested in that. Uh, Sam, what are your thoughts on this? And I'll, I'll see yes. what Mustafa has to say. Well, I, all he's saying is right here, Quran 547 for the fifth time. The tafsir is judged by what Allah has revealed in the gospel. Is they can't find what Allah's revealed. They are disbelievers. You see, notice what he just said. He goes, in other words, Allah's telling them to judge by something they can't find. So in other words, it's not really, hey, judge by what you have. Try to judge by what you have, but you don't have it, so you're going to fail to judge. That's what he just said, by the way. That's his logic. Well, And this is the guy that's going to come on Saturday. But anyway, let's give him some more verses, Dave. I want you to do me a favor. Same sur uh, surah, surah, surah al -Maida. You know these. You've used these. Go to chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. Just read that. Chapter 5, verse 66 and 68, and we'll look at one more, and then I'll read what Ibn Ashaq says, because they like to go outside of the Quran, because he wanted to go to tafsir. But in chapter 5, verse 66, and then 68, Dave, again, help me understand, you're going to read it. It says that the Jews and Christians will not be successful until they follow the Torah and the Gospel, and that was revealed to them from their Lord, and then they'll be successful. Can you read that and explain to me how can they follow scriptures that don't exist at the time of Muhammad. Chapter 5, verse 66, and then skip to 68. Mm -hmm. um, if only they had stood fast by the law, so that's Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation that was sent to them from their Lord, they would have enjoyed happiness from every side. There is from among them a party on the right course, but many of them follow a course that is evil. Now, Sam, notice it says there's a party from among them that's on the right course. So that means that we we do have we do have the scripture. So what what this is saying, Mustafa, is that the Jews and Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. Some some of them are following it. Some of them aren't following it. This is very strange if we don't have the Torah and the gospel. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's self-explanatory. It says. They need to follow the Torah and the Gospel, what was revealed to them. That means all of their scriptures, not just the Torah and Gospel, meaning everything the Jews and Christians had. Now, Dave, in case he accuses of misreading it, doesn't Allah basically reiterate that same point in verse 68? In 566, now read 68 so everyone can see. What does Allah go on to say in 68? All right. So... Surah 5, verse 68, say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. And if you do, what is the reward? What do it, you get if you do? It is the revelation that comes to you from your Lord that increases in most of them their obstinate rebellion and blasphemy, but sorrow, do not sorrow over these people without faith. Okay, you guys got it, right? Muhammad is told by Allah, tell the Jews and Christians, follow the Torah and the gospel and all the revelation from your Lord. You will be successful. You will have gardens. But those who walk away after you exhort them, they increase your sorrow. So now I'm really confused. You mean Muhammad is actually sorrowful because they're not following the Torah and the gospel and the revelation given to them? But according to Mustafa, they can't follow it because it wasn't there at that time, right? Mm-hmm. How does this make sense? Can you help me understand? Because, again, you know, I got mental issues, so maybe you can help me understand his logic. No, yeah. Know. Mustafa's saying, ha-ha, you don't have the gospel, uh, the gospel of Jesus. Christians in the 7th century definitely didn't have the gospel of Jesus. <laughs> Allah and Muhammad are saying, why aren't, you, why, aren't you, why aren't you guys following the gospel of Jesus? Oh, some of you are. There's a party from among you that's following the Torah and the gospel. And then Allah says, oh, by the way, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the Torah and the gospel. You have no ground to stand upon. So Mustafa is basically saying, Jews and Christians, you have no ground to stand upon because Allah commands you to stand upon the Torah and the gospel. And you don't have it because uh, yeah. some, for some reason it disappeared and Allah just couldn't protect his word when he says that no one can change his words. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not getting my mind around this. Um, Oops. Can we look at another one to really put the icing on the cake? And then I'll read it in a huh. talk. Another one. Can we? Sure. Another one, guys. Remember, he said, 
They don't have the gospel of Jesus. Where is the gospel of Jesus, Sam? Where is the Injil of Isa? <laughs> All right. Chapter 7 and verse 157 of the Quran. Chapter ah. 7, verse 157. Interesting what do they choice. Have them already? And then because that's going to segue into Ibn Ishaq. Chapter 7, verse 157. All right, we have it. And let me see if I can get these in between so we can read that. All right, so let me see. I think the sh shortest version is Shakir. Okay. All right. Those who follow the apostle prophet, the Ummi, whom they find written down with them in the Torah and the Injil. Wait a minute, Sam. Mm. This says that they find Muhammad written down with them in the Torah and the gospel. This means that they still had the Torah, whatever the Quran means by Torah and gospel, people still had it in the 7th century. And notice it says, written down with them in the Torah and the gospel. So here it's talking about a book that Jews and Christians have. And these books are called the Torah and the gospel. And Jews and Christians still have them in 7th century Arabia. Oh, but David... You don't know what that gospel was. Ha, ha, ha. Surprise, David. Surprise. Now, now this is going to seg segue into Ibn Ashaq. Now, the reason why I'm going to Ibn Ashaq, folks, because if you read Mustafa's comments, he keeps telling us, go to the tafsir. Go to the tafsir. Wow. So, go so, to the exposition. So not the Quran? So, no. Yeah. So, so, Sam, let me get this straight. We're asking, where does the Quran at all say that the Bible's been corrupted or that the Bible can't be trusted. Where does the Quran say that, suggest that, hint at that? Where does it say it? Because all we ever read is confirmation of the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures. And the response is, go to the tafsir, which were written centuries later by Muslims who understood and knew that the Quran contradicts the Bible, and therefore we're forced to try and reconcile it. We're forced to do what Muslims are, are, are doing today. Namely, oh, we have to twist and distort the Quran to get it to say, to get it to say that the Bible's been corrupted. And so, yeah, they're, 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 he's basically saying, guys, Allah and Muhammad obviously didn't know that the Bible's been corrupted, but later Muslims did. So go to the later Muslims, not the Quran. Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you tell us chapter and verse where... The Quran says the Bible's been corrupted. I'm, I, I just can't figure this out, Sam. Yep. No, they can't because the Quran clearly confirms the incorruptibility of our holy Bible. But they see the dilemma. Our Bible proves Muhammad is a false prophet, antichrist, and they must condemn Muhammad and worship Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the Son of God. But since 7157, and I want Mustafa to hear, to be ready for Saturday, I hope he comes with better arguments. Chapter 7, verse 157 is saying, there's a prophecy, supposedly, of Muhammad, the illiterate, really the unlettered prophet, in the Torah and the Gospel that is written down with the Jews and Christians at that time. Guess what the Muslims decided to do? They decided to go and quote mine the Bible that it existed at that time. Now, guys, I'm going to read something from Ibn Ishaq. I'm going to read it slowly. I'm going to bring out the implication. But understand the implication of this. The Muslims believing the Quran went to the scriptures of the Jews and Christians that they had at that time, started going through their scriptures, and they thought they found such prophecies of Muhammad. So they would quote Deuteronomy 18 and the Gospel of John. But in doing that, guess what that means? That means they were fully aware that the only Torah and Gospel that the Quran could be speaking of must be the very scriptures that the Jews and Christians were reading, meaning they realize, well, the Torah has got to be the Old Testament and the Gospel has got to be the New Testament because Muhammad is referring to the Torah and the Gospel in the possession of the Jews and Christians. And when we go to them, all they have are the Old and New Testament books. So these have to be those books that Muhammad is referring to. And they went and searched for prophecies. Ibn Ishaq. Now I'm reading from the English translation. I'm reading from the English translation of Ibn Ishaq, which you can purchase on Amazon, done by <clears throat> Alfred Guillaume. It's the life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulullah, pages 103, 104 in the English. Okay, now 
<clears throat> Here's what Ibn Ishaq said, because he went looking for a prophecy of Muhammad in the Injil. Christians, you've heard this before. You got to hear it again, because if you know this material, they can't refute you. They can't. They're going to tap dance and twist and lie, but they cannot refute the facts. Glory to Jesus Christ. Here's what he says. Pages 103, 104 of the English translation by Alfred Guillaume. Among the themes which have reached me about what Jesus, the son of Mary, stated in the gospel, which he received from Allah, God, for the Ahlel Injil, the followers of the gospel, in applying a term to describe the apostle of Allah, the apostle of God, is the following. Now, guys, quote verbatim. You got to really listen. It is extracted. It is taken from what John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus, son of Mary. Did you guys catch it? Because I'm going to show you what he quotes. John the Apostle wrote down the gospel that Allah gave to Jesus for the followers of Jesus. So here you have the oldest extant biography on the life of Muhammad that has now been preserved throughout the centuries. Unfortunately, we don't have, uh, we don't have the copies of Ibn Ishaq's work. What we do have is copies of Ibn Hisham's editorial work of Ibn Ishaq. Let me real quickly explain why that's significant. Ibn Ishaq wrote his biography around 750 AD, 8th century AD, about 100 years after death of Muhammad. Ibn Hisham came in the 800s. Ibn Hisham, remember this name, came in the 800s, 9th century AD, took Ibn Ishaq's work, he edited it, he removed things he didn't like, changed things around, and what we have are copies of what Ibn Hisham did to Ibn Ishaq. Unfortunately, we don't have copies of Ibn Ishaq's work, we have copies of what Ibn Hisham did to Ibn Ishaq. Now, you know why that's important, Christians? Because Ibn Hisham removed stuff he didn't like. When there was something in Ibn Ishaq he didn't like, remove it. Something that made Muhammad look really bad, remove it. And yet this part of Ibn Ishaq, he did not remove. He kept it intact, meaning that Ibn Hisham accepted this as authentic. So not only Ibn Ishaq, but Ibn Hisham after him. Let me read that part again. It is extracted from what John the Apostle set down for them when he wrote the gospel for them from the testament of Jesus, son of Mary, and he quotes the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 23, to chapter 16, verse 1. Now, David, help me understand the logic. Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham after him, because he didn't remove that, meaning mm -hmm. that he agreed to that it's authentic. They both agree. John, the apostle, wrote the Gospel of John, wrote down the Gospel of Jesus. What Gospel? The gospel God gave to Jesus, he wrote it down for the followers of Jesus. So does that mean any time you and I read the gospel of John, according to Islam's oldest extent, life of Muhammad, that is the gospel that God gave to Jesus? So that is the true gospel preserved? Uh, yeah, we're stuck with that conclusion, or we just have to conclude that neither Allah, nor Muhammad, nor the early Muslim community had any clue what they were talking about. Wow, and that's the same gospel, David, that calls Jesus the eternal word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and that word created everything, gives life to everything, who became flesh, who became Jesus. That same gospel, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, and you know what's amazing? The Quran confirms that Christology. In chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran, Surat the Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171, Muhammad says, Jesus is Allah's word that came down to Mary, and he came from Allah as a spirit into Mary to become flesh, confirming what the Gospel of John says. So, surprise, Mustafa, mm -hmm. the Gospel of John is the Gospel of Allah that he gave to Jesus, alayhi salam. There you go. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to post a little more from Mustafa here, and we're happy to go through these passages. I just, I just did want to uh, point out, ladies and gentlemen, even though... Um, the the Muslims who who post comments we we are you know we have we have fun with them and we uh, we let you know how we what we really think about your arguments which is that they're silly uh, I don't want that to ever cloud the fact that 
we actually respect you more than the people who refuse to show up, right? We actually respect the Muslims who are willing to engage in a discussion more than the ones who say, ah, oh, we could refute those guys easily. They're, they're dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. But then they run whenever we, whenever we say, well, we'll join us live, right? So just to be clear, uh, Mustafa and any other Muslims who are, who are joining this discussion, we're happy to have you here. And again, we, we do respect your willingness to stand up for what you believe. But Sam... Prepare to be devastated. That's it, man. I'm going to retire from apologetics and go into pizza. Mustafa, pizza. Mustafa said here, read Quran 3-7. And then he added in a follow-up comment, Quran 3-7 talks all about Sam and David's deception. So, um, Sam, uh, apparently Quran 3-7, I have no idea why... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why I, Mustafa would what would want to go here, but Sam, uh, if you don't mind, I want to go a few verses earlier to Surah three please, verses three to four. You. I actually was going to tell you to do that. <laughs> I guess great minds think alike, Sam. Alrighty. So I'll go ahead and go back to Surah three verses three to four. We'll read that, then we'll go to Surah three seven, and maybe Mustafa can uh, can clarify for everyone how this clearly applies to David Wood and Sam Shimon here. All right, so. Surah 3, verses 3 to 4. A um, bunch of translations here. Let's go with Shakir. He, this is talking about Allah, He has revealed to you the book with truth, verifying that which is before it. And He revealed the Torah and the Gospel, the Torah and the Injil, the Torah and the Gospel. And we'll scroll down to the next verse. Revealed the Torah and the Gospel aforetime, a guidance for the people, and He sent the Furqan. Surely they who disbelieve in the communications of Allah, they shall have a severe chastisement, and Allah is mighty, the Lord of retribution. Now, um, Sam, yes. so notice uh, the Quran here says that Allah revealed the Torah and the gospel. He calls it a guidance for the people. Or you can you can uh, look at the uh, translation right above that, the Hilleli Khan, which is called a guidance to mankind. So the Torah and the gospel are are a guidance to mankind. And right. then it says, if we disbelieve, if we disbelieve in these revelations, there's a severe torment for us. And yeah. what's Mustafa saying? Oh, you can't you can't trust the Torah and the gospel. They're not the word of Allah that, that he's referring to. Well, what are the Torah and the gospel? They're these books that you don't have anymore. But Allah says, <laughs> Allah says, <laughs> Allah says yeah. that he's, re he's affirming the books that we have. So Mustafa, Mustafa, Who's the one who who fits this condemnation here? Allah condemns someone for disbelieving in his revelations, disbelieving in the communications of Allah. Allah says he's confirming the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the book that we have. <laughs> and you're saying, nope, it's not the book that you Christians have. It's some other book. And so who's being condemned here? Your God is the one who's condemning you. This is the chapter you. This is the chapter you told us to go to. L yeah. Little little side note here before before we move on, Sam. Yes. Little. One other issue here. When uh, see, I'm looking, guys. Do, do you see the transliterated Arabic here for verse three? See yeah. right. See right there. This little part. This little translated part. I mean, transliterated part that says. Lima Baina Yadehi? Yes, right. Sam, uh, what, what, what is the Baina Yadehi that this is? What, what, what's Baina Yadehi here? That we're looking at you the know, transliterated. Now I'll scroll up to a translation. Tell us what that is yeah, and, and how it's You're relevant. shocking me. Honestly, great minds, or maybe mentally diseased minds think like, because I was about to mention that. You, you're shocking me, dude. So anyway, Musaddiqan Lima Baina Yadehi, even Muhammad Assad. In his translation confirms it's an idiom it's an idiomatic idiomatic phrase meaning that which is between his hands literally confirming that which is between his hands now it's not literally between his hands the literal arabic is between his hands but that's simply an idiomatic way of saying any any book that he had access to that he could pick up and read that was in circulation at that time so guys understand what the literal arabic is saying Muhammad confirms whatever scriptures the Jews and Christians had that he could go and consult and read or have read to him and physically touch. 
Historically, the only books that were between his hands in the possession of Jews and Christians are the books of the Bible today. This is just a fact of history. It's a fact of the manuscript tradition. You can't get around this. The Jews and Christians did not read any other books than what you find today. End of story. And that's what he confirmed to be true. That's what it means. All right. So just to be clear here, he has revealed to you the book with truth verifying that which is before it and he revealed the torah and the Injil. so in multiple places in the quran the torah and the gospel are called the are referred to as the inspired preserved authoritative word of allah but we find this phrase often being used bina yadehi which literally means between its hands or between his hands and this this means that the Quran, Allah, is affirming scriptures that were still available in the 7th century, which goes back to exactly what we were saying. If, if, if Mustafa wants to say that this is referring to a book by Jesus, well, guess what? Then he's saying that this book was there in the 1st century, preserved to the 2nd century, to the 3rd century, to the 4th century, to the 5th century, to the 6th century, into the 7th century, so that Allah could say, yes, that book that you Christians have, the book that you're reading, that's the book that I'm talking about. He's, what book is that? Guys, Mustafa, we know the book that Christians had in the 7th century. We know the no, book that Christians had in the 6th century. You. Yeah, if you... Dave, see, he stumped you. He did? He's got a response to you. Uh-oh. I don't mean to cut you off. He said, Sam, why were books removed from the Bible? That's it. Destroys the argument. Books were removed from the Bible. <laughs> your argument destroyed David. All right. So let's let's go ahead and, and scroll down to uh, let's go ahead and scroll down to verse seven here, because that's that's the one that's going to crush and humiliate you, Sam. That's right. It's over for me right now. By the way, you know, I was laughing. What? Uh, there's there was a brother here. I think Sonny. He said the Quran is just as real as the Harry Potter books. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> All right. So here, here you go, See, Sam. That's it. I'm done. I got to retire, David. I'm going to go work in a pizza buffet. Mustafa, <laughs> Mustafa wanted us to read 3-7. Yeah. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, all we've been asking for, show us a verse of the Quran which talks about the corruption of our scriptures. It's a very, it's a very simple challenge, right? Because think about this, M Muslims. You guys and all your apologists always tell us, oh, uh, huh, your book's been corrupted. Your book's been corrupted. And when you tell us that, it, it's confusing to us because your God and your prophet do nothing but affirm the inspiration, preservation, authority of our book, the book that we have, the scriptures that we still have with us. That's what your God and your prophet do. And so every time you say, your book's been corrupted, ha ha, your books were changed, books were removed, it was changed and corrupted, oh, the Council of Nicaea, all we're hearing, all we're hearing you say is, our God is stupid and our prophet is stupid. Don't believe in our stupid God and our stupid prophet because they don't know what, what they're talking about. That's all we're hearing you say. You're telling us that your God and your prophet are wrong, that we should never in a million years trust your God and your prophet because they don't know what they're talking about. That's what we hear when you say these things. All right, so M.H. Shakir. He it is, so Allah, he it is who has revealed the book to you. Some of its verses are decisive. Definitely not the verses that talk about the corruption of the Bible. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> those, those verses aren't decisive. They are the basis of the book. And others are allegorical. Maybe Allah's just speaking, you know, he's, he's, it's the allegorical verses that no one can understand that are talking about the corruption of our scriptures. Then, as for those in whose hearts there is perversity, they follow the part of it, which is allegorical, seeking to mislead and seeking to give it their own interpretation. But none knows its interpretation except Allah. And those who are firmly rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it, and it is all from our Lord. And none do mind except those having understanding. So according to what Mustafa is, uh, is intending by this, Sam, he's yeah. basically saying that when we quote Every clear verse in the entire Quran talking about the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures, of our scriptures, um, those are all, those are just allegorical. <laughs> and we're, we're clinging to these You're allegorical done. passages and not going with the decisive passages. Now, uh, You're done, Dave. That's it. It's over. Yeah, you yeah Mustafa, you, you might want to investigate. According to the Quran, according to the Quran, Allah's commands are clear. They're crystal clear. And if you, want to, if you want to examine the tafsir, if you want to go to your commentaries on all these verses in the Quran, which talk about Allah's 
uh, Allah's revelations being mubin or clear. If you want to go to those, look at what they say, because they have to reconcile that with, they have to reconcile all of those verses which talk about the Quran being perfectly clear with this verse, yeah. which says, uh, you know, yeah, but some of it's just allegorical. And the way they reconcile that is they say Allah is perfectly clear in his commands. He's perfectly clear in, his, in what he commands. Well, guess what? Christians judged by the gospel is perfectly clear. So that's not talk that's not an allegor that's not allegorical, right? So you don't even know what this you don't even know what this means and you're saying this refutes us. No, it's Muslims who ignore all of the clear verses, all of the clear and decisive verses affirm the inspiration, preservation and authority of our scriptures. You guys are the ones who go to all these things that can't possibly be referring to the corruption of our scripture and you twist the meanings because you find these weird vague verses that you can distort. Right. And I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying you, Mustafa. Uh, I, I'm assuming that you're someone who listens to other Muslim apologists. There are Muslim apologists who know they are twisting and deceiving this stuff, and so I assume that you're just you're, you're following some of these guys. But you, you need to take a closer look at these things. Now, Sam, uh, mm -hmm. we obviously didn't discuss this ahead of time, but we've we've yes. we, our minds have been in sync here. Our minds have been in sync, Sam. Yes. I, I think there's something massively ironic about Mustafa, uh, beyond what I just pointed out, beyond what I just pointed out, I think there's something massively ironic about Mustafa going to a verse like this, saying this 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 applies to us, and it's, yes, a, it's a problem it for ironic. us. What, what, what do you think? What, do you, what are you thinking? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And guys, I, there, if you go to answeringislam.net and on my blog, I wrote an article on answeringislam.net and on blog posts on chapter 3, verse 7. It is ironic he applied it to us because now let me give you the historical background. Don't take my word for it, and then I'm going to show you how it contradicts itself. Guys, just pick up Ibn Kathir in English or go to altafsir.com and read the various expositions of this passage. Tabari, Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir will tell you that the first 80 verses of chapter 3, guys, I really want the Christians to get this because the Muslims should know this. And if they don't, hopefully they learn something. According to the Muslim uh, sources, the first 80 verses of chapter 3 were, quote-unquote, sent down, revealed, in order to respond to the objections and arguments by the Najrani Christians, Arabic Christians from Najran, who had visited Muhammad in Medina and asked him questions. And the sources say they stumped him. He didn't know how to answer now, according to the Muslim sources, one of the responses Muhammad was given is chapter 3, verse 7. What did chapter 3, verse 7 state? Pay attention. It says that the Quran contains two types of verses. Clear, unambiguous, they're the mother of the book, Umul Kitab. And we're going to come back to Umul Kitab in a minute. The Arabic words are Umul Kitab, mother of the book. For, don't forget that phrase we're going to come back to it and then there are verses that are unclear and only those who are perverted in heart seek their meaning when their meaning is known only to allah according to the muslim scholars this was revealed to silence the christians who are using statements of the quran such as chapter 4 verse 171 the christians told muhammad 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 you say isa jesus is karimat allah the word of allah right yes Ruh Allah, Spirit of Allah, right? Yes. And this is in Ibn Kathir. And this is in Tabari. I'm not making it up. Well, there you go. He's God. And Muhammad said, what do you mean? If Jesus is the Word of God, and the Word of God is uncreated, because God has never existed without His Word, you just prove Jesus is God, because He's God's Word and He's uncreated. Oops! So then guess what Allah did? Allah said, Muhammad, tell them not to focus on those verses. Those verses are unclear. No one knows what they mean except Allah. Only perverts like David and Sam Shamoon are going to come later on and use them to silence Islam. Tell them, stop, you perverts. Mm -hmm. That's actually the reason why this verse was composed. Now, maybe you want to unpack it a little further, Dave, because, you know, on that. Uh, no, I mean, I, 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 don't, clear, I, don't, right? I don't know what to do here. I mean, we ask, we ask for, it's a simple, it's, guys, I want to be clear. It's possible to, you know, get nitpicky or really, you know, really just be insincere in, in the questioning. But we're, we're completely serious about this. You Muslims say 
Oh, your Bible's been corrupted when we read, we read your book and Allah and Muhammad seem to have no clue about this. And Allah and Muhammad, so here's, here's, let, let, let me go and break it down like this. The message that Muslims give us today is, Allah sent down the Torah and unfortunately man man corrupted that and then he sent down the gospel and unfortunately man corrupted that and he he sent all these prophets into the world and men just keep just kept going to you know just they, they just kept taking these revelations and distorting them and perverting them and so finally Allah said I'm sending the Quran and this I will protect by myself miraculously so that they can't corrupt it anymore and now everyone has to go to the Quran in Arabic and try to try to understand what God wants us to do. That's the message I get from Muslims. When I go to the Quran, I get a completely different message. The message I get from the Quran is Allah has sent prophets into all the different parts of the world and Allah sent messengers who brought scripture, revelations for all these people in different languages. And the last people to receive a revelation were the Arabs and so Allah didn't want the Arabs to be the only people without a revelation in their own language. So Allah said, all right, now I have to give a revelation to them too. Otherwise, they'd have to you know, believe in a revelation in some other language. And I can't have them doing that. They wouldn't be able to understand it. Right? So, so once Allah sent Muhammad with the Quran, now everyone had their revelation. Now, everyone had the revelation and everyone is commanded to judge by their own revelation. That's why Allah is confused. Wait a minute. Why are Jews coming to you, Muhammad, when the Jews have the Torah, the revelation that's meant for them? Why are why would why would Christians come to you? The Christians have their own revelations. Now, everyone has their own revelation. Muhammad brought the final revelation because those were the last people who needed a revelation. And that's why Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Now, everyone has their revelation. Everyone can judge by the revelation in their own language and that's what you're commanded to judge by that's why Allah consistently says guys I'm affirming the scriptures that you have I'm affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the scriptures you have you need to judge by the scriptures that you have with you in your language that's the message we get from the Quran and then Muslims come along nope everyone has to judge by the Quran in this other language and that completely refutes the entire reason the Quran was sent According to, according to the Quran, the Quran was sent so that Arabs could have a revelation in their own language and they wouldn't have to ask people about another language. That's the reason Allah sent the Quran in Arabic was so that Arabs could have a revelation in their own language. And now what do Muslims say? Nope, Allah sent the Quran in Arabic so that everyone in the world who doesn't speak Arabic now has to judge by a book they don't understand. It's completely the opposite of what Allah says. And we point this out to you guys, and we're completely serious. We're, we're pointing out you guys are nonstop, endlessly contradicting your own God and your own prophet, and you don't seem to care. Why would we take your religion seriously? Precisely. And so we're, we're completely serious. And then we ask you, and we invite 1.6 billion Muslims. Everyone, come on, just show us. Just show us where the Quran says that our scripture has been corrupt. Show us, where, show us what we're missing here, and what do you do? You completely twist and distort the meaning. Oh, 3-7, oh, you guys are just stubborn. You're in rebellion. You're going with allegorical verses. No, we're not. No, we're not. And so, wow, Sam. Wow, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. and I, I want to highlight some more points on 3-7 to show you the nightmare because I know some people are saying the debate is about to start. That's why we did it an hour earlier. Oh, yeah. Now, guys, several more problems with chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7 says that the meanings of these verses – the unclear ones are known only to Allah. Now, I want Mustafa to pretend to be hearing instead of talking about the Apocrypha. Understand, Christians, what this means. According to the Muslim sources, when the Quran says, Jesus is the word of Allah sent down to Mary and a spirit from him, that is an ambiguous passage. No one knows what it means except Allah. Do you know what that means, folks? That means no Muslim can tell you what it means. Anytime a Muslim tells you, Jesus is the word of Allah because he was created by the command of Allah, that means they're saying Allah's a liar because that's supposed to be a passage. No one knows what it means except Allah. So Muslims, don't ever tell a Christian what the Quran means when it says Allah, Allah sent down Jesus as the word of Allah to Mary. Jesus is Allah's word that came down to Mary, to Mary as a spirit from him. Don't you ever tell any Christian what it means because according to chapter 3 verse 7, that happens to be one of the verses that's meanings are unknown except to Allah 
only. So don't you dare tell us what it means. Second problem, second problem. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 7 says that there are clear verses of the Quran and they are the mother of the book, Ummul Kitab. This now introduces another problem for you Muslims. Two problems, actually. Number one, when you go to the Hadith, which you Muslims like to do, Muhammad called chapter one of the Quran. Guys, Christians, listen to this. How silly this religion is. Muhammad said, Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter one, seven verses. That is Umul Kitab. That's the mother of the book. Now, let's tie in the Hadith with the Quran. The Quran says, the clear verses are the mother of the book. Umul Kitab, the mother of the book. Muhammad says in the Hadith, chapter one of the Quran, that's the mother of the book. According to the Hadith, only seven verses of the Quran are clear. Everything else is unclear. No one knows what they mean except Allah. Because according to Muhammad, chapter one of the Quran, which is only seven verses long, that's the mother of the book. And in chapter three, verse seven, we're told the clear verses, they are the mother of the book. Wow. So Hadith says out of over 6,000 verses, only seven are clear, everything else is unclear, and that's confirmed by the commentators. Go pick up any commentary, Ibn Kathir, and go read his exposition on any verse. He'll give you several interpretations. Some said this is what it means, others say this is what it means. Other, In other words, over 90%, in fact 99% of the Quran is unclear and no one knows what it means, which brings me to the other problem. <clears throat> Before and after the revelation of chapter 3, verse 7, Muhammad would go out of his way, way to say, the entire Quran is clear. It explains everything in detail. It is a clear Arabic Quran for people to understand. Just let me give you a couple to prove it. Chapter 6, verse 114 of the Quran. Chapter 6, verse 114. Say, shall I seek for judge other than Allah when he it is who has sent unto you the book <clears throat> explained in detail? Chapter 6, verse 114, this book that I sent down upon Muhammad is explained in detail. It doesn't say some or most of the verses. The book in total is explained in detail. That's 6, 114. Chapter 12, verse 111. Chapter 12, verse 111. <clears throat> in their history, verily, there is a lesson for men of understanding. Chapter 12, verse 111. It is no invented story, but a confirmation of the existing scripture and a detailed explanation of everything. Detailed explanation of everything. Not some things, not most things, everything explained in detail. That means there's nothing ambiguous of the Quran. The Quran explains everything in detail. Chapter 16, verse 89. Chapter 16, verse 89. I'll give you two more. 16, verse 89. One day we shall raise from all peoples a witness against them from amongst themselves, and we shall bring thee as a witness <clears throat> against these thy people. 16 verse 89, and we have sent down to thee, Muhammad, the book explaining all things, explaining all things, not some things, not most things, all things explained. And finally, chapter 41 verse 3, 41 verse 3, a book whereof the verses, not some, not most, the verses are explained in detail. A Quran in Arabic for people to understand. So folks, tell Mustafa and the other Muslims, how can the Quran repeatedly say, this book explains all things, everything. The verse is explained in detail, and yet you have a verse that says, some verses are unclear. That is a blatant contradiction in the Quran. And what did the Quran say? Had this been from other than Allah, they would find many contradictions, and it's filled with contradictions proving it's not from the true God and Muhammad is a false prophet and the final irony because you guys have heard of the different Arabic qira'at the different Arabic versions of the Quran over 38 thus far and how they have variant readings to this day different Arabic versions with different readings now here let me blow your mind away are you guys aware that there's actually more than one reading according to the Muslims when it comes to chapter 3 verse 7 let me go to the relevant part and explain what I mean, and I'll be done with this. But those in whose hearts, this is chapter 3, verse 7, but those in whose, whose hearts is doubt, <clears throat> pursue that which is allegorical, that which is unclear, seeking to cause dissension by seeking to explain it. Now, here's the part. 
According to the standard Arabic that's followed by Muslims, the 1924 Cairo edition, it says none knows its explanation except Allah, period. And those who are of sound instruction say, we believe therein, the whole is from our Lord, but only men of understanding really heed. There's another Arabic reading of this verse, and the other Arabic reading goes like this. Pay attention, guys. None knows its explanation except Allah and those who are of sound instruction. The other reading says it's not just Allah knows. Allah and those who are taught and are sound instruction, they both know, period. Say, we believe therein, the whole is from our Lord, but only men of understanding really heed. So now, David, help me understand. According to the Muslims, this verse is itself unclear because one reading says only Allah knows. The other reading says Allah and those who are instructed know. So even the verse that says the Quran is unclear, it itself is unclear. Man, holy moly, the holes in the Quran keep getting bigger. Oh yeah, those holes just keep getting bigger and bigger. This is bad stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a couple comments right here. Apostate Prophet said, why do these Islamophobes insist on attacking Islam? Easy, because they know Islam is the truth. SubhanAllah. Exactly. You got us there. I got to go become a pizza guy. All right. Now, there is this guy uh, named Sir Ott here who uh, keeps posting comments. Uh, here he says, dude, I'm telling you the Bible is corrupted, but you don't want to listen. I have good arguments. Uh, chat, awesome. help me please to get his attention. Uh, Surat, just to be clear, we're not even we're not talking about whether the Bible's been corrupted or not. We're talking about whether the Quran says that the Bible has been corrupted, and all you have to do is give us a verse. <laughs> just give us a verse that shows that according to the Quran, the Bible is corrupted. That is a simple request. You know how you do it? Muslims who are watching, you know how you do it? Chapter, verse. Right. Chapter such and such, chapter such and such, verse so and so. That's that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do to show us that the, and we'll we'll pull it up. We'll pull it up right here on the screen. That's all you have to do. And yet it's the first thing we get is oh, well if you go to the hadith, oh, well if you go to the tafsir, oh, well if you go here, guys, it's so simple. Chapter verse. And and Surat, if you'd actually like to have a discussion where you'd like to show that the Quran affirms the corruption of the Bible, uh can't send me a, send me an email. And we'll set it up. You can go live. You'd be one of the few Muslims in the entire world who's actually willing to try to defend this. Because when we bring it up, we find that mm, people people kind of just run. They kind of just run. All right. Now, where's the comment? Let me find a comment here by Sitko since we've been focusing on Sitko. All right. Here you have it, Sam. Yeah. Everything you're saying is garbage because you have lost and removed books from your Bible. How do we know the Bible at the time of Muhammad had the same scriptures as today when books were removed? Um, Mustafa. This guy don't get it, does he? We, one, we have copies of the Bible from before the time of Muhammad, during the time of Muhammad, and after the time of Muhammad. We know what the Bible was at the time of Muhammad. So if you're <laughs> If you're saying we've got a problem here, then you need to be showing us. Oh, no. Yeah, Those Gospels that you have here, they didn't exist back then. We have copies of them. You're the... Mustafa, have you ever heard that the person making the claim bears the burden of proof? Right? Yeah. Um, we have copies of the Bible. We have copies of the Bible. If you're saying something that was in it during the time of Muhammad has been removed and it's not in there anymore... That one, you'd be destroying Islam because Allah says no one can change his words. So you'd be just completely wrecking your religion. Feel free to go ahead and wreck your religion as yeah. much as you want. But okay. two, if you're saying books were removed, tell us, Mustafa, tell us which books that were in the Bible during the time of Muhammad are no longer in there. And two, show us that the books that we have in the Bible now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and so on, show us that those were not in the Bible during the time of Muhammad. You're the one making the claim now give us the evidence because Mustafa, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. If if, if you're talking about if you're talking about the Nag Hammadi uh, text, the Gnostic text, and so on like that, and you say, uh, well, why aren't those in the Bible? I at least understand what you're talking about, and I would just break it down. Those are not first century documents. That's why they're not included in the Bible, right? They were later Gnostic heretical sources. That's why they're not in the Bible. 
if you are talking about the uh, the apocrypha, the 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 works the from the intertestamental period, right? The the books between the Old Testament and the New Testament. I would at least know what you're talking about then, and we can have that discussion. What you're talking about right now? Well, there were these books in the time of Muhammad, and then they disappeared. I have no idea what you're talking about, and guess what? Neither do you. Exactly. And you can't you can't actually answer the simple simple question of where the Quran affirms the corruption of our scriptures. And so you're trying to divert the divert the topic. Because keep in mind, the best case scenario, best case scenario, if you could show somehow that our Bible's been corrupted, all you've done is is provide more evidence that your God and your prophet were complete idiots and didn't know what they were talking about. That's all you would do. Oh boy, you don't get it. And nope. he did say apocrypha, but uh, Mustafa, let me just help you understand David's clear exposition, more clear than the unclear and clear verses of the Quran combined. You have to show us what books the Jews and Christians had at the time of Muhammad, not us. He confirmed the scriptures of the Jews and Christians. And according to the Quran in chapter 45, verse 16, when it comes to the Old Testament, it was entrusted to the Jews. You have to then show us what books the Jews were reading at the time of Muhammad, not us. And by the way, I have lists from Muslims, which I'll say for you on Saturday. And the Muslims, shortly after time of Muhammad, tell us what books the Jews were reading. It's going to backfire against you. But I hope you understand what he's telling you. You don't tell us to prove. You need to show us what they had, because that's what Muhammad confirmed. Show us what did they have that Muhammad said, read, follow. These are the words of God, and you can use them to judge me. End of story. Yeah, just um, Sitco Gaming just said, what what planet are you from, dude? Sitco Gaming just said, David Wood just said the Bible is corrupted. No, yes, I is. no, I didn't. And this guy's going to call Saturday? Now, sure? now, now think about this. He said the Bible's been corrupted. Why? Because I talked about, what in the world are you talking about? Because I talked about the Gnostic books? Is that what you're saying? That because I said Gnostics later, after the time, after the time of the of the actual writers of the Bible, other people came along and wrote all sorts of weird stuff. That means the Bible's been corrupted, dude. Assuming you are correct, if if if, okay. Let, let, is this guy's gonna call Saturday, dude. You sure? Yeah. Uh, let me let me break this down for you real quick. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got you upset, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's like it's like talking to a wall, right? It's like I Islam know. has this effect on people. It it, it, it makes them like this. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna show you the problem here in a way that even you should be able to to understand it, uh, Mustafa. Um. Hmm. Okay. If you're saying that someone coming along later and writing something means that the original text has been corrupted. Guess what? I'm writing something after the Quran and I, and, and it says this Quran claims Jesus is Lord. See, I just wrote this. I just wrote this. Mustafa I claim, I'm claiming that this is the Quran, and this Quran claims that Jesus is Lord. I just wrote this. Mm -hmm. So now, according to you, Mustafa, the Quran has been corrupted and altered because you're saying that if some some if some Gnostics, a heretical group, comes along later and they write some heretical, you know, Gospel of Judas or something like that, then the the original the original book is corrupted. You just claimed that. You claimed that. I would regard that as insane, but you claimed that. Therefore, following the same principle, if someone comes along after the Quran and writes something, well, then the Quran itself has been corrupted. You just proved it, dude. You just proved your own book has been corrupted. But watch, everyone. Suddenly, that's not going to be the rule anymore. Right? It's the Sam, have you noticed it's the same thing with like Surah 3, verse 78 and so on? They'll say, ah, you want to know where the where, where the Quran says the Bible's been corrupted in 378? Allah says they twist yeah. the scripture with their tongues. And you say, well, look, I mean, there, there are Muslims all over the world who twist the Quran with their tongues. Does that mean the text has been corrupted? Oh, no, 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 no. It only means it with the Bible. And so they, they change the rule. This is some amazing stuff, man. Yeah. Notice everyone. Uh, oh, good. No, no, just saying, you're right, because in chapter 4 of the Quran, verses 44 to 46, it says that the, the Jews would twist Muhammad's words. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see a Muslim saying that because the Jews twisted Muhammad's words, they then corrupted the text of the Quran. And then to add to that, 
chapter 15 of the Quran, which you know very well, chapter 15, verses 90 to 91, it talks about the shredders who shredded the Quran, tore the Quran into shreds. That still doesn't mean the Quran's corrupted, David. Shame mm -hmm. on you. Surprise, David. Yep. So, Mustafa, you're claiming that if someone comes along later, if someone comes along later and writes something, and you reject it because it's later and has nothing to do with the Bible, well, that means the Bible's been corrupted. Ha ha, the Bible's been corrupted. Well, great, Mustafa. <laughs> then you got two problems. Oh, I just came along after the Quran. I wrote something and I said it's the Quran. Therefore, your Quran's been corrupted. And oh, by the way, if the Bible's been corrupted, then keep in mind these Gnostic writers, they're writing in the second, third, fourth century and so on. So this all happened before the Quran, which means that according to you, the Bible's corrupted before the time of the Quran, and yet Allah is affirming the inspiration, preservation, and the authority of the, the Christian scriptures that existed at the time of Muhammad, which means you're calling your God a liar. You're calling your prophet an ignorant moron. Oh boy. That's oh what you're boy. telling us. Guys, yep. I, I, I just want to recap because we're going to get off here because, uh, because you know a lot of people want to watch the debate. I'm going to go watch the debate. Yep. But guys, just, just understand because we can't emphasize this point enough. The Quran does nothing but affirm the authority of our books. The Quran does nothing but say that our books can't be corrupted, right? The Quran says that we dis people distort the meaning of the books, that we, 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 we change the meaning of the book in order to get un-Islamic doctrines. But that's not because the text has been changed, that's because we twist it with our mouths, right? So that's the position of the Quran. Muslims come along and say they and they say the text has been corrupted, which completely contradicts their book. So we put forward the simplest request it, that you could possibly put forward: chapter and verse. Give us the chapter. Give us the verse. And they can't do it. They'll do okay. it in videos. They'll do it in the comment section, but they'll never come on and do it live because they don't want us to immediately expose the deception. And what that means is that they know that this is based on deception. They know it. They know it. And what, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You'll start off by going to some verses. But then as soon as we start exposing them, you have to change the subject. But what about the Apocrypha? What, nothing to do with anything that we're talking about. If we're talking about what the Quran mm -hmm. says about the Bible. And so, guys, you just have a big problem here. You're just left with a big, massive dilemma. That's right. Amen. Yeah, two, po two possibilities. We have the word of God or we don't. If we have the word of God, Islam is false. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. Your Amen. religion self-destructs. Mustafa, you need to leave your religion. All right, Sam, uh, final thoughts. Well, no, there's not much I can say. Just again, guys, learn the arguments. That's all I'm going to say. Learn these arguments. I promise you they are irrefutable. They're battle-tested arguments that we've perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit in actual spiritual battles. They can't refute the truth. Jesus Christ is truth. He's alive. He is Lord, and he lives. And may the Lord Jesus bring Muslims to saving faith and preserve us in his love. And then don't forget tonight, 1 a.m. I know it's late for you guys in New York and in Michigan. 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going live on Jesus, Israel, and the church. Lord Jesus willing. And I guess I'm going to see you sometime this week. Yes, and uh, just to notice what Sam said. Uh, these are these are field-tested arguments. Notice what we did. We, 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 we've made the claim. We've been making the claim. The Quran affirms our scriptures and our scriptures refute Islam. So do the math. There's no way out of that. Amen. Right? Lord Muslims Jesus. respond to it, but, but they do not want to come on here and join us live and actually show us because they know that the verses that they go to cannot stand up to scrutiny. The verses, they know that the verses they normally go to, as soon as you read the passage, as soon as you understand the historical background, there is no way whatsoever that it can be talking about the corruption of our scripture. They know that. They're lying. I don't mean all Muslims, I don't mean all Muslims are lying. I don't believe most Muslims are lying on this. Most Muslims think the Quran actually affirms the corruption of our book. But their leaders, their scholars, their apologists, they know. They know they're distorting our text. They the, our text and their text. They know it. They know they're deceivers, but they have to do it. Why? Because if they don't, they'll get eaten alive like Sheikh Yasser Qadi. That's what will happen to them. And, they know it. And so, hey, by the way, just I don't mean to cut you because we no already got to go. Nadia, I just want to say, Nadia, he's making fun. There is no chapter 69, verse 69 of the Quran. Big Jack is making fun of the Quran. It is a 
sexual euphemism. He's saying the Quran is basically a book of porn. There is no mm -hmm. 6969. So Nadia, don't fall for it. She fell for it, poor sister. Just wanted to say that. Yeah, so, uh, so guys, yeah, the Quran claims to be clear. Muslims say it, it tells us that the Bible's been corrupted, and yet they can't find one single verse that does that. Yep. And so when, when we say this is field tested, notice what we did. We've been putting forward that argument, and we invited every Muslim in the world to join us live and refute us, and they can't do it. That should tell you, that should tell you something about the argument that we're putting forward here. 1.6 billion Muslims, all the Muslim scholars, all the Muslim apologists, they can't refute this. They can sound like they refute it when you first bring it up, if you only bring up two or three verses or something like that, and if you don't know how to go through the verses that they will bring up in response. But once you actually know the verses that they bring up, you know the verses of the Quran that affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our Bible, there's no response to this. There's no way around it. They're Refutable. stuck. So if Christians would go out and learn this argument, you could you could wreak havoc in the world of Islamic apologetics. You could yep. you could wreak havoc. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are asking what the debate is, yes, the vice presidential debate is on tonight, which I find interesting. I have no idea about Pence's debate skills. Um, uh, Kamala Harris is uh, a prosecutor, so her job uh -oh. is to actually go after people. Uh, so so anyway, this this should be interesting here. Uh oh. All right, that's it for us. Remember, Christ is risen. He's alive. He's almighty to save. He's in love with us, and he's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May he cover us by his blood and fill us with his spirit and keep us in love with him. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we love you. And I'll see you today, 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm out. Yes, and I'll be going live tomorrow night, but uh, on a different topic because we do have a brother who wants to talk about some very important current events that I've been getting a lot of requests to comment on. And so we actually have someone who studies this a lot. That'll be tomorrow night. I'll have the, uh, I'll have that up. Uh, I'll have the, uh, I'll have the live stream up pretty soon as far as the announcement, but yeah, be sure to tune in tomorrow. Catch y'all later.